Did you know that in ancient Egyptian culture, personal hygiene was very important? The Egyptians held their gods in high esteem, believing that one must be clean and tidy when in the presence of the divine. This belief is even noted in their funerary texts, like the Book of the Dead, which states that only those who are clean can enter the afterlife. This shows just how seriously cleanliness was taken. For instance, nearly every social class in ancient Egypt used cosmetics to look appealing. However, thousands of years ago, they didn't have so many cleaning products available today. So what did clean really mean back then? When thinking of ancient Egyptians, the stunning hairstyle of Cleopatra might come to mind, but in reality they wore wigs because they had no hair. The Egyptians suffered greatly from parasites like lice. Despite their practice of bathing daily, lice couldn't be easily washed away. To combat this, Egyptians came up with a brilliant solution, shaving their heads. Yet, since baldness was not deemed attractive, they began using wigs around 4,000 years ago, becoming one of the first civilizations to do so. Initially, wigs were made from shaved human hair, sometimes mixed with sheep's wool. Later, from around 1650 to 1550 BC, horsehair was introduced into wig making. Wigs were indeed practical. Dirty? Just throw it away when the wigs. Tired of the style? Change it up. The wealthy could afford multiple wigs, wearing different ones for various occasions. Some were jeweled, others were perfumed. Some nobles even dyed their wigs blue, mimicking the hair colors of gods from Greek mythology. In contrast, the less fortunate could only afford wigs made from woven papyrus or simply wore headscarves. Some scholars argue that wigs still harbor dirt and lice. Indeed, many mummified bodies infested with lice have been discovered, showing that ancient Egyptians couldn't escape close contact with lice, even in death. Thus, wearing wigs later became a symbol of status, distinguishing between classes and hierarchies. Wigs were so significant that they were not only worn in life, but also taken to the grave, as life's importance carried over into the next world. Archaeologists have found burial wigs in many ancient tombs, one might wonder if only the hair on their heads was shaved, wouldn't lice infest other body hair? In fact, to prevent lice, Egyptians would shave all body hair. Any hair that couldn't be shaved was plucked with tweezers to ensure the body was entirely hairless. Pharaohs and male nobility often sported fake beards, a symbol of status and power. In intimate relationships, to maintain cleanliness, women generally chose to shave their body hair, while men underwent circumcision. Over 4,000 years ago, an Egyptian relief depicted a scene of men undergoing circumcision. In the depiction, one man on the left is restrained by two others. One holds his hands from behind while the other performs the circumcision. Similarly, on the right side, one man is responsible for the cutting, while another holds the hair, or the wig of the person undergoing circumcision. Today, it's commonly believed that circumcision originated in Egypt. The famous Greek historian Herodotus mentioned in his writings that Egyptians practiced circumcision for cleanliness, valuing it more than decorum. Speaking of cleanliness, how did the ancient Egyptians manage waste? And how exactly did the ancient Egyptians relieve themselves? The poor either relieved themselves outdoors or dug holes in the ground. Those slightly better off might carve a hole in a wooden stool, placing a pot or bucket underneath to serve as a rudimentary toilet. The wealthy had more refined setups with limestone toilet seats over large boxes of sand, akin to large litter boxes cleaned out by servants, much like cleaning a cat's litter box today. It's no wonder they revered cats so much. The Nile River, the lifeline of the civilization, provided abundant water for irrigation, turning arid land into fertile fields. Yet, without modern sewage systems, household waste and excrement were often dumped directly into the river, severely polluting it. This pollution threatened not only the river itself, but also the fields it watered. Crops irrigated with this contaminated water carried diseases, leading to outbreaks of diarrhea and parasite infections among the population, significantly increasing the mortality rate. Ancient Egyptians loved to bathe, despite not having running water or an abundant supply of clean water. Due to the hot climate of the region, not bathing would make the body feel very uncomfortable. Thus, for many, bathing became a morning ritual after waking up. Bathing was a daily ritual for many, regardless of social class, using various basins and jugs to wash up. Wealthy homes had beautifully decorated bathrooms with servants to assist in bathing, and natural sodium carbonate soap was used to ensure a pleasant scent the less fortunate bathed directly in the Nile. Egyptians were also particularly fond of foot baths, and during the period from 2181 to 2040 BC, a wild array of foot bathing basins and tools were developed. Affluent families had various types of foot baths made from stone, painted pottery, ceramics, or wood, and the truly discerning would wash their feet before and after meals and before bed. 
Beyond bathing, ancient Egyptians used perfumes and deodorants to keep themselves smelling pleasant. The most popular fragrance was kaifi, a concoction of frankincense, myrrh, pine resin, cinnamon, cardamom, saffron, juniper berries, and mint. This sweet and spicy scent was highly coveted but rare, as many of its ingredients had to be procured from far-flung regions like Punt in southeastern Egypt. More affordable perfumes were made from various herbs and animal fats, shaped into cones worn on the head to emit a fragrance as the wearer moved. To combat body odor, some even mixed ostrich eggs, nuts, willow, and crushed turtle shells with fat, applying the mixture to sweaty areas to mask odors effectively. Maintaining fresh breath was essential for the ancient Egyptians, who are believed to have invented the first toothpaste around 2000 to 2500 years ago. A papyrus document found in 2003 describes a tooth whitening powder that turned into a paste when mixed with saliva. This early toothpaste, made from rock salt, dried iris flowers, mint, and pepper, was effective despite its potential harshness on the gums. Egyptians also created a candy from ground cinnamon, pine nuts, and cashews mixed with honey reminiscent of modern mint candies, though its effectiveness at freshening breath is unknown. Additionally, they chewed parsley to keep their breath fresh. Besides their usual cleaning methods, the ancient Egyptians also used enemas to clean inside their bodies. They believed that diseases came from what they ate, so they did enemas often to stay healthy. This practice was reportedly inspired by a ibis, which was seen taking in water and then administering itself an enema. While it's uncertain if the story is true, Enemas were definitely common in ancient Egypt. Pharaohs even had special servants for performing enemas. Back then, doctors often had roles as priests, and each one typically focused on a single type of disease. Those who performed enemas for the pharaoh were given a significant title, guardians of the anus. The ancient Egyptians went to great lengths to ensure they were clean and presentable in the eyes of their gods. Imagine if you were an ancient Egyptian today. Would you dedicate as much time and effort to maintain such cleanliness?